in Objective Personality, they talk about this idea that we tend as people to apologize for the cognitive functions that we are weak in. And I'm beginning to notice this in people, and I find it very interesting. So I want to give you some examples of exactly what I'm talking about. I was having a conversation with someone who is NT, so a person who favors uh, their intuition over sensing and their thinking over feeling. This NT person was talking about a prospective uh, significant other. And this person said, <clears throat> I know that uh, people frown on or disapprove of what I'm about to say, but one of the things that keeps me from seriously considering this other person <clears throat> for a long-term relationship is that I'm not sure that I'm actually physically attracted to this person. Now, what this NT person was saying was, the world says, or the people of the world say, it's bad to um, rule someone out of, out of a, a possibility of having a relationship with them because of the way they look. And so I have to apologize for uh, the fact that I am considering ruling out a relationship with this person because of the way that he or she looks. Now, the opposite of someone being in T is someone being SF. So a person who favors feeling over thinking and sensing over intuition. SF people would not ever really feel the need to apologize for ruling someone out as a candidate for a relationship because of the way that person looks or because uh, the SF person is not attracted to the, the prospective uh, significant other. Nor, I think, would the SF mind perceive the people of the world as saying it's bad for you to eliminate from contention a person for possible relationship because you don't like the way he or she looks. The NT mind apologizes for making decisions in an SF way. The NT mind says, I can't <clears throat> rule this person out because I'm not attracted to him or her. That, that, by the way, would be an SF way of thinking. The NT mind says, no, I have to come up with sound reasons why I should rule this person out. And when the reason really is, I'm just not attracted to this person, the NT mind says, I need to apologize for that. I need to tell everyone, I know this is bad, and I'm very sorry that I'm thinking this way, but I'm allowing how I am um, affected by the sensory. I'm allowing the fact that, I, that when I look at this person, I don't find them attractive. I'm allowing that to uh, affect my decision making. The SF mind would, would be free to say that. Would Someone would say to an SF person, hey, uh, I, I know you went out on a date the other day with such and such a person. What'd you think? The SF mind would oftentimes feel very free to just say, I mean, it was fine. We had fun and whatnot, you know, nice person, but I'm just not really attracted to her. I just don't find her to be very pretty or something of that nature. Uh, I don't think the SF mind feels any great need to apologize for that, <clears throat> nor does the SF mind perceive the human beings of the world to be hostile to that idea. The reality is some people out there would, would say, that's bad that you would think that way. Probably a lot of the NTs. And some people would not. Most people wouldn't really care all that much one way or another. But because making a judgment based on the way something just hits your eyes, basically, I like the way this person looks or I don't, because that is a very SF way to deal with the world, the NT naturally needs to apologize for it. <clears throat> 
Likewise, another NT person with whom I was having a conversation was talking about uh, trying to make a decision on making a purchase of, of sorts and in the same manner was trying to justify making a purchase of one item over another using reasons, like sound logical reasons, when in truth, the SF aspect of just liking the way the thing looked or not liking the way the thing looked was playing a significant role in this person's mind. But this person did not want to admit that and even felt the need to apologize for the idea that an SF viewpoint was affecting the decision-making process. Let me kind of put that in some more concrete terms. Let's say a person is going to buy a house. <clears throat> As an SF, if I go to purchase a house, I may merely pull up the driveway, take one look at the house and be like, it's ugly. I don't like the way it looks. I don't want this house. Someone may say, don't you want to go inside and look around? And I might say, no, because every day when I come home from work, if I have to pull into this driveway and look at that, I will be unhappy. <clears throat> I think it's ugly. I don't want it. We don't need to keep on looking. We can move on. Now, it's one thing if it's just that it needs paint or something like that, but I'm talking about a situation where you genuinely don't like the whole structure of the house, okay? The NT mind is more apt to perhaps look at the house and even not like it, but then feel some need to justify that through sound logical reasons. So the NT mind may at first has it have an SF reaction of, Ooh, I don't like that, but still may go through the process of saying, well, let's go in and look around. Why? Because the NT mind may have already made up its mind it doesn't want the house, but it now needs to support that with something more than just SF likes and dislikes. <clears throat> it needs to support it with NT reasons. Well, as I went through the house, I found that this was wrong and this was wrong and that needs repair and this is going to, you know, not fit exactly what we're wanting to do. The size of the house is wrong for what we want to accomplish, so on and so forth. When in reality, it's possible that the NT mind just SF didn't like it whenever they saw it. I mean, for me, if I look at something and it's pleasing to my eyes, that's like 75% of the battle right there. In fact, I will even have to find ways to get around the ST and NT aspects of the house that are not great. I may go, I may pull up to a house and be like, I love this house. It looks amazing. And then someone who's using some logic might go through the house with me and go, man, that's a problem. This is a problem. I thought you said you wanted a house that had this feature. This house doesn't have that feature, so on and so forth. And I am so drawn to just the fact that it made me happy when I pulled up and looked at it that I'm trying to rule out all of the ST or NT reasons why I should, why I should avoid the house and, and make excuses for why I want to buy the house. I, I might make up fake ST or NT reasons or not completely fake, but you know, I may overemphasize borderline NT and ST reasons to try to support why I should buy the house when really the only reason I want to buy the house is because I just really like it. The NT person is more apt to need the reasons to buy or not buy. And when it becomes apparent that the reason the NTP, I'm sorry, the NT person doesn't want to purchase, in this case, the house, it, it, when it becomes apparent that that reason is SF in nature, they just don't like it. They don't like the way it looks or there's just something about it that they just don't care for. That NT person, if he or she is willing to just admit, I just don't like it, will oftentimes feel the need to apologize. He or she might say, uh, I know that I shouldn't make decisions based on just the way the house looks, but 
I just don't really like the way this house looks. I know it's got everything I wanted. I know that it's in great shape. I know all these, and they'll give you all the reasons why they ought to buy it and then say, but uh, I know this is terrible of me to say, but I just don't like it. The SF mind won't do that. The SF mind is not going to go, I think it's wrong to not like this for no other reason than that I just don't like it. And therefore I'm going to have to apologize whenever I say, I just don't like it. The SF mind will freely go, it's ugly. I don't like it. I don't want it. I have no interest in this house. It's hideous. Move on. Now, these are extremely, um, to some extent, oversimplified uh, examples to make it easy to communicate and understand. We as people do this in all sorts of ways. Whatever it is that, whichever cognitive functions you favor, you will then feel the need to think that using those other cognitive functions or relying on them or allowing them to influence you heavily, uh, you will oftentimes see that as being some sort of weakness or fault or that it's bad or wrong. You may need to apologize for it. So for someone who, let's say, is um, <clears throat> an extroverted uh, intuition type person who's always uh, gathering in new ideas, the the need to narrow down on one idea may cause them to say something like, I know that I shouldn't just believe this one thing and rule out all other possibilities. But now in this case, the NE person may have become convinced of this one thing and really want to, to narrow down on this one idea, but they almost feel the need to apologize for narrowing down on one idea at the exclusion of all the other ideas. Someone who is... Um, uh, introverted sensing might feel the need to apologize for, uh, you know, branching out and gathering in new sensory things. Like, let's say they go to redecorate their house, right? They might feel the need to say, I know that all of the decorations that I have now are perfectly fine and that my house looks good the way it is. And I know I shouldn't be out spending money on these frivolous new pieces of furniture and pictures, Whereas the SE person, the extroverted sensing person, is going to be like, look at my new table, look at my new pictures, look at all this new cool stuff I got, and feel no need to apologize for the fact that they just went out and maybe blew a bunch of money on bringing in a whole lot of other things. Thinking people are oftentimes going to feel the need to apologize for being emotional. Emotional people, or let me say feeling people, are oftentimes going to feel the need to apologize for cold clinical analytical thinking and so on and so forth it goes with each of the cognitive functions and those cognitive functions working together cause us to need to apologize for their opposites like SF apologizing for the times that it's too NT or NT apologizing for the times that it's too SF and the same would be true for ST and NF. I can imagine <clears throat> an ST person apologizing for being too um, hippie-ish, too, too, too concerned with the vibe of things. Um, and I can see an NF person feeling the need to apologize for being too uh, specific and direct, too analytical, too concerned with making sure that everything functions properly. Whatever it is that you lean on as being your favored cognitive functions, watch yourself and see whether or not you do not apologize or tend to, in your own words, try to find a way to apologize or dismiss the fact that you have to use those functions which you do not favor. It's a fascinating thing that I've seen objective personality point out. And as I've been watching other people, I see it. I see them do it. I see myself do it and I find it to be very fascinating. So I wanted to share it with you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do please click the like button. Uh, please subscribe if you have not already. I would really appreciate that and have yourself an awesome day. Bye now.